I have a really dark view. I think the emotional devastation is gonna be hard to come back from. And there's no way to stop that. And it's happening everywhere all at once. AI is thrilling, it's very exciting, but there is a non-zero chance that it poses existential threat to the human race. So over the next three to five years, how disruptive do you think it will be? And what are people not prepared for? AI is not gonna replace humans. Humans with AI will replace humans that don't use AI. Because you can see that in your workflows right now. There was a paper by OpenAI where they estimated 15 to 50% of tasks get automated or improved. Mm. We contributed and collaborated on a 10 million 3D object data set. So by next year, you'll be generating 3D literally live. In a couple of years, you'll have HD movies. We can finally remake Game of Thrones season eight and other such travesties. But the speed of this is something whereby it's happening in every media type at the same time, and it's easy to use. This is just so seamless because there's no friction. Your mum can use this technology. You can use this technology. You don't need to be an expert because it came and was trained from our content and our collective content, as it were. And now it's just easy to implement and use. So I think this is the big differentiator between this and other massive advances because they required infrastructure. The internet, that was the big lift up. You had the consumption period of web two when the cost of consumption dropped to zero. Now the cost of creation is dropping to zero and humans plus AI can massively outperform humans that don't. It's a forcing function, which means everyone has to use it. Mm -hmm. I have a really dark view of uh, not the next 12 months. It'll be a three to four year sort of span where I think there, there's going to be emotional devastation and probably economic devastation. I think the emotional devastation is going to be hard to come back from. I also think kids are going to have a junior year existential crisis of what do I do? How do I future proof myself? What is the world going forward look like? I think there could be a massive loss of enthusiasm where a feeling of malaise settles over young people who are just like, why bother? I'm, I'm just going to get destroyed by AI. They're going to be able to do it better than me. What do you think about that? Do you agree? agree that that is a very real thing that's going to sweep through. I, I do agree. I think that, again, we're not sure exactly how this is going to pan out, but probably the best mental model I figured out to think about this technology, it's like really talented grads that occasionally go a bit funny. They can draw, they can code, they can make 3D models. How would your business be affected if you could push a button and infinite grads came out? How would your personal life, your society? And this is why I think it's quite deflationary. The only question is, can we create new jobs to make up for that? And that's difficult because you, Do you said think you, we can. I doubt we can, to be honest. I think this is an economic disruption that's far bigger than COVID. And the important thing here is COVID, you have the disruption, then everything bounced back. You're at record employment now and things like that. With this, there's a lot of never the same again. It's like you talk to your kid's school teacher, I can't set essays for homework anymore because of chat GPT. Mm -hmm. And there's no way to stop that. So what is never the same again? And it's happening everywhere all at once. So this technology isn't just like, there's a bar of entry where you needed to have a modem or you need the latest smartphone or something like that. It has an embedded base that it's seamlessly going into. Look how fast Microsoft implement on the consumer side. But enterprise is not ready yet. It's like at the iPhone 2G stage, you just got copy paste. And next year and the year after, you suddenly at the iPhone 10. And so this is one of my big concerns. And that's one of the reasons I decided to do open source. So I could stimulate growth because I think the only thing that can basically fill the gap is if we stimulate entrepreneurs to create brand new businesses, brand new jobs to make up for that.